What's up guys? This is the Rifleman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as the Italian States. So to pick up where we left off, we are sieging um, two of the border t cities on the uh, on the frontiers of India. So we're attacking Zahedin and we're also going to be attacking Kabul in this episode. So without further ado, let's secure the first territory from the Mughal Empire. And the sooner we get this done, the better, because uh, our troops near Calcutta are incredibly vulnerable. So we, w <laughs> so we would like to um, apply as much pressure as possible here, while we, in, it, well, in, a, in an attempt to try and draw forces away from Calcutta, because it's only a matter of time before they realise they have to respond to many more fronts than they nominally would like to do. But we shouldn't. It shouldn't be too difficult because the Mughals, well, a large portion of their forces are made up of bowmen and levy, probably because of uh, financial constraints. Oh yes, and a lovely flat terrain piece. Well, I might still put guns up here at the back. Because it allows me a bit to be a bit more offensive with my battle line. There we go, quite a nice elite army. Got to be careful that I'm not interfering with... Okay. Right, the Swiss Pike's throwing it all out of whack. I get it. I did wonder, how come everyone else is so... How come everyone else is so um, similar and I've got one unit that's huge? There we go, something like that would be fine. Put some Mountain Jaeger on either flank. Let's back one flank up with pikes. And the unit that has pikes can have the Lancer Guards and the Heavy Cavalry. It's a bit more general purpose. Can go on the other flank. There we go. General's bodyguard in the center. Let's get ready to let's get ready to target my. Well, I mean that's a no-brainer there. Attack these units. No, attack, get one to attack over there. Because this also will be a lovely set of kills. I know like they've already fired with it before I could. Uh, target them properly. Three units are broken in that initial engagement. Oh, I did it again. Bo I did it again with my light infantry. Get you over here. Get you guys over here. Yeah, I think these guys are going to uh, experience a lot of heartache. So now let's actually target some of them. You target those guys. You target. No, don't don't target the guys on the right because that's probably going to be something we have to formally fix. Let's actually pivot our line like this. I want to see these. Artillery pieces do some do uh, blast some uh, shrapnel shot towards the camel mercenaries. Misses, miss, hit, hit. Okay, let's retarget. And you guys can go after the general's bodyguard. Dervishes are charging in, but the Swiss Mountain Jaeger are not going to take that take take that too well, especially as they've got their pew 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 guns. I don't quite know why. You men fire it well off. So who's that? Unit of dervishes, couple units of levy. Okay, let's make my field artillery engage with round shot. Let's actually get one of my howitzers <clears throat> to fire on the right hand flank. There we 
you. There goes the artillery. Well, there goes the general's bodyguard. Shrapnel shot of the bowmen. Okay, let's actually make these howitzers target the units that are coming in because we're going to need to deploy cavalry. Although, again, with, with the pew pew pew. These are Swiss Grenadiers. They're not going to take a charge so easily. You're not going to walk away with that one, I'm afraid. Get one last volley off into the flank of those dervishes. Oh, maybe not. Commit the pikes. Get the heavy cavalry to charge the dervishes. Push my light infantry up on the flank. You guys fight the dervishes, that'll clear them out. And then let's get my pikes to break apart the left flank. So my pikes can break apart the left flank and then we can wheel around. I mean, the dervishes, you know, they're, 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 they're fair, they were fairly good units in the early game, but now they've just not got the staying power. There we go. So you guys go charge the bowmen out on the flank. You guys are still... Let's get my lancers out of there. They are needed for this engagement. My lancers can stay on the move. The dervishes are routing. My lancers can go attack some of their cavalry up here. Field artillery switched to round shot, bombard that unit of musketeers. I mean, my heavy cavalry is just mowing down this unit of levy. Pivot my infantry, bring up the light infantry. Cease fire with the quick climb. Too late. <laughs> it's killed half of my lances already. Right when I say, you know what? Let's not shoot that anymore. There we go. You men better carry on the slaughter. Obviously, the, the unit of dervishes have returned just in time to catch my Jaegers on the hop. Fortunately, my stabby fellas are in position. Let's turn guard mode off. They can chase them down. Bring my cavalry back. Cease fire all artillery. You come after the dervishes. There we go. You'll chop them apart. Good old heavy cavalry, the 14th horse guards. So I'm going to get my general's bodyguard out into the mix because I would like to see if I could get him another experience point. So let's target the Kizilbashi musketeers and let's speed up time because I'm pretty sure that should be the end of it. So make sure my general's attacking the right person and then let's carry on. It would be nice to try and kill the... to kill more men with my... Um, kill more men with my lancers, because it means that when I re replenish, because of the loss they've taken, they should actually gain some of their experience back. Okay, yeah, so my cavalry's bugged out. One of them's run up here and he's stuck. That's another reason why... Ooh. Okay, attack this guy. Stay away from those spikes. So yeah, so now I don't have an actual normal movement icon. I've got a, a weird crosshair thing for the general. It doesn't really recognise him as being on the field anymore. He's in a house, but he can't be in a house because he's 
Because he's cavalry, so he can't just be in a house. Oh well, Empire does funny things. <laughs> but there we go. The territory is secured. Then we can get on to immediately... Well, there's not, there aren't really any good roads we can use anyway. So let's just replenish. We've got a palatial state farm, pleasure gardens, and a pleasure garden. So I'm going to knock one of them down because I want to replace it with a church school because we will need that. Yep, there's a stack of Mughal troops. So you can change your course and go down here. You're going to, well, you're going to advance there's two main routes with this mountaintop. We've got a bunch coming in across the desert, so you can actually come down to the south as well. Again, Patna is a university that we've taken, but we, we can't do anything about. And the other territory is up here. Let's attack Kabul. So we're going to take the city, and again, these two armies have got orders to run up to the crossing points in an attempt to try and hold off the um, immediate enemy response with some brutal river battles. That's the that's the strategy there. I think that's the it's a good one to do. So let's well <laughs> let's wait and see if that does work. Because if they push on us with five stacks per bridge, then then maybe maybe it's not so good. Hmm. Okay. Artillery up on the hill. Bombard them with delicious goodness. How it's his same mission. Let's take... Let's see, four infantry units plus my light African mercenaries to go around the right flank. Let's take four infantry plus some guards to go around the left flank. And they both take some cavalry, including household guard. We're not going to go through the town. There we go. So these men can run down here. The new men need to run to build a new front line. One cavalry go wide. Let's put a curiosier inside, in well, in in board, I guess. Switch my howitzers to round shot so they can actually get involved. Yep, here come the mortars. At least my howitzers when I go to fire at the dervishes. If this line turns out to be too aggressive, then I will push it back. Yeah, they're going to be aiming at the dervishes. Shells inbound. Oh, good hit. Yeah, I might be a bit keen. But yeah, with this force on the flank. What they're going to be doing is they're going to be, this force is going to be fixing them in position while my other guys come in around the flank. You guys try, try bombard the populace with one of your howitzers. The other howitzer attack the garrison musketmen. One unit pick out the camel gunners, another unit pick out the dervishes, one unit pick out that unit of dervishes. There we go, you men make ready and fire. Those dervishes could stand to be softened up. I mean, that's the 43rd Horse Guards. Retarget the howitzers, because one of them was engaging that unit of dervishes. There we go. So these are... Household cavalry. These are heavy cavalry, good sir. Don't think you want to be doing that. These men form skirmish order. There we go. 
push up my line quickly so we can try and engage some of these dervishes at extended range. Change your position like that. Let's probably get my, my cavalry out here on the flank to help protect my light infantry. General's bodyguard might be available for ambush by my light cavalry. These dervishes are advancing to my line. They're not charging, but they're not happy. Come on, can you not deploy there, like that? Get my howitzers. Attack ground, quick climb there. One of you, attack ground, quick climb there. We've ambushed the general. Misfire against the first order. Pushing the light infantry, because the dervishes are gonna want to ambush them. We've killed we've killed their generals here. Charge down that unit of dervishes. My left flank can push up. There we go, the heavy cavalry have dealt with one unit of dervishes, and another unit of dervishes has also been shattered. So let's take you guys and pivot to face down the first. Those dervishes have been dealt with. Hey. Now it's a switch to round shot. Let's take these three units, advance them up to the center of the line. Cavalry hunker down. Looks like everyone else is... Well, we need to advance anyway. You attack the dervishes. To be honest, let's just cease fire with my... Cease fire with my artillery. Looks like Bylock Arm Populous is going to engage the African Light Foot. And these guys aren't stellar. But at the very least, they should do some damage. The colonial line could do this. Colonial line could do with some backup. So let's run our cuirassier over. The second mortar is likely not to stand up to our punishment. The mortars at the, in the centre of got upset. You guys advance like so. Yeah, just charge him. Charge the dervishes. They go. They think they're doing so well until slam right in the flank. And that's what we want to see. Thirty-third, take no prisoners. There we go. Keep attacking because they're running through your line. You may as well. And then we're just going to execute the mortars by gunfire and also charge our cavalry in to deal with the rest of the enemy because it looks like some of their units are coming back. It's only that and a unit of camel gunners. Charge the camel gunners again. Charge the armed populace. And they're done. So they, they got a good volley into our household cavalry. That's a bit of a bummer, but meh. 
I think those guys were still alive and they were sneaking around behind our lines, but they have since routed. But there we go. Kabul. Kabul is taken. And that's a new... Well, there we go. So we've got our front line against the... Against the, um, the Indian factions. So let's repair the Pasha's Palace. Let's replenish this chap. Let's take our spy and send him onward to Lahore. There we go. So we've got an enemy army already on the, the bridge anyway. There's another army to the south. But that visibility we've gained is pretty critical. Those guys can continue the way they want to continue. Uh, we've got... Chuck a bunch of line up here to join those three. Let's take one of these rakes and join Amanda Martin. Let's take. Okay, so you guys, yeah, you are building up a another navy. That's pretty good. But let's hop over to India because we should have. You guys are still replenishing. We've got some ships. Let's try to build you to a church school to see if they let us. And I think you might actually have that steam dry dock secured. In which case then, second rate ships ahoy. You're continuing to recruit. So there's a lot of, a lot of crap heading this way. But hopefully, now we've blown a hole in their line here. Okay, yeah, you don't need to spy that way anymore. You guys infiltrate Ahmedabad. You men push along to Udaip Udaipur because they've got... That's quite a large amount of territory to cover in central India. We can see we've got a few armies to take care of on this side of the river towards Naroon. Mesfahan... Yeah, you're chipping away. There's not a lot to do. I don't want to invade yet. I want my armies to be more, you know, closer to this river than we attack. Because then we've got three areas that we can focus our fire on. That's my, my intention. Yep, all my spies are running over to the <laughs> new territories. We've got a couple more armies to deploy. Up in Scandinavia, which is pretty good. Obviously, you're continuing to rebuild that army there. And we need to build our shattered army that was destroyed near Louisiana. But things are... We're at the stage now where things are inevitable. Ooh. Uh, no. You're on the wrong side. Uh. Nope, nope. I need to push the other army up the eastern bank so that my army that's guarding the river can't it won't be attacked on both sides. There we go. So you guys have suddenly realised. Oh, wow. you, you hey, you can't just yeah. So again, same thing. And I don't want you to intercept him because he's weak. Okay, so that. That eastern flank is looking untenable. Finally. Oh my god. So the, here we go. We killed nearly 3,000 of their troops. I'll take that as a win. Don't worry. We'll be back for you, New Orleans. We're going to deploy with a whole bunch of men. Yeah, they're now starting to pour... Troops over to our new front line, so we need to just maintain the pressure. Attack everywhere. This is why got, this is part of the reason why we've got so many armies, so that we can actually uh, mount that type of defence. And then when the moment is ripe, pow! Yeah, you can run on if you like. The, the, we've got an army to the south. We'll chase you back. Yeah, they're they're getting they're moving to guard their own crossings. And they're having to keep what's that? That's four stacks near Louisiana because they know we're going to try it again. By the looks of it, they know we've not really pulled back. We've just uh, we're we're waiting to get our breath back. 
Come on, give me my... There we go, give me my movement back. So Louisiana was destroyed, yep. Cartwright built trade port. Governor's Palace. Let's go get... This sixth rate. You can pick up Silvano Rui. And then you, good sir. I mean, we could push Falmouth. Say so you down here and deposit you off the inside coast here. Down this, on this river. Because in time, you can advance here. And you can advance here. Distribute le razioni. The time is ripe to hit, to hit Falmouth. It will draw in lots of their reinforcements. And they are strengthened. Obviously, you also, also want to hit this guy. You want to hit this guy. You still can't do anything. There we go. Just keep on, keep on building and upgrading. Obviously, you need to... Oh, hello. You need to intercept Ali Pani. Well, you need to intercept this force and drive them back. You need to intercept... Okay, I might actually bring you back here. And you're going to have to hit them and drive them back. You're going to hit them and drive them back. You're going to be ready to fight them. You're going to hit them and drive them back. You're going to hit them and drive them back. Okay, right, right, right. We got a plan. We got a plan. It's going to involve a lot of... Uh, <laughs> a lot of battles. That's what that's what needs to happen. If you don't if you don't fight the the Mughals, they do just keep on building that strength. So you, you know you can either fight them or you can actually do stuff. Or you have to fight them, otherwise they'll just be they'll just destroy you. Okay, so do you guys need to be in Bavaria anymore? Nope. So let's get you over here as well. Do you guys need to be in... Well, accidentally right-click them, so I hope they haven't got to be in Cologne anymore. Nope. Let's get you guys over here as well. Artillery's on the move. First of all, fleet arrives. And there we go. Privateers. So now we can combine... Those two ships, as the three privateers take up this trade post, you guys combine. And then let's go back to Europe. So you men also sail out to join them. And in terms of elsewhere, we could do with the Côte d'Ivoire. To be honest, we could do with everywhere. We've got the Oh, we've also done the uh, East Indies. Yeah, we just need to keep building our... Keep building our ships. Keep exploiting those... Trade zones. There we go. So Nino, yeah, you're 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 important. You're critical because you can guard the inner, you can guard the Mediterranean. Okay, let's recruit a sloop to guard this port. We got some thirds and fourths. Is two fourths. Okay, so this fleet is currently fully recruited, so you guys can go down to West Africa. These fifths can sail over to the East Indies. These fourths are going to combine. Yeah, you're first rate. So, I mean, you're crewing a proper fleet. Okay, you guys can recruit a militia. Because none of these, all of these ships could be put to work. 
I mean, this former Russian fifth rate can also go over to the East Indies. The war galleon and the ship of the line can join the fleet. These two fourth rates can join that fleet. The fifth rate, Hussar, go over to the East Indies. Eh, probably. Oh no, you're max max recruiting other things. What about Rotterdam? Yeah, you can garrison Bristol. Over here in Husum, you two. One more turn, then you've got a bunch of ships recruited. So you may as well leave you. Ennio Spinelli. Let's get you up to Bergen. So you've got two turns to wait. Let's recruit a small stack of second rates to you already. You can also you can just wander over to Brest. They don't have to be there critically. You know, they don't have to be there immediately. Whereas these guys. These guys are also going to go help crush India. And those sixth rates will then sail on to a trade zone. To provide some level of gunfire support. There we go. Let's upgrade this commercial base into a global trading company. How's our money doing? 171,000 a turn. That should get a lot better. Once we, I mean, we get seventy-seven thousand from from um, trade. <laughs> um, but even if we lost all our trade, we'd still be up a hundred more than a hundred thousand ish. No, seventy thousand. Yeah, but roughly forty four hundred thousand to three thirty thousand, roughly. So lots of the recruitment can carry on as normal. Let's see, you're, you're getting more troops. Okay, got a lot of battles to do this turn. Workers on strike in Montagnier. Not anymore. Workers on strike in Oris and Cigar. Exempt them from tax. Build a church school. I don't know if that counts as a river crossing, so I think I'd rather sit here. And this steam dock. Good. Soon it will have more ships built. You guys set to recruit a just a sloop. Okay, here we go. Daniele, Daniel. Actually, first of all, because we've got plenty of time in the in the episode, I want to get my so you men up there to block you men. Not put them in the fort because I want. If I put them in the fort, I'll try and keep them there, but I don't want to keep them there. That's the problem. Okay, let's dispatch some of our armies to go down to the south, and the other armies keep them pushing up to critical nodes, critical crossing points. Because even though we're on the way, well, I mean, yeah, that's another army we have to fight. But I do want to get. Oh, okay, you fell back, so let's put you down here. You can probably fight them, to be honest. Again, that's another fight we're going to want to do. We're going to want to fight. I'm in Kachuaha to drive them east. Not bother building anything here. You guys keep pushing. Yeah, the road through Kabul is looking pretty busy. So building a church, uh, building a church school. Let's build a craft workshop and a craft workshop, and then. You guys should be fairly happy with us. I mean, you're not going to like it, but you will get used to it. Right. So this advances you more directly to the south than attack. So I don't want to bring in this army. So ideally, this army will be pushed up to here, so that if an army's drive up the east bank, they'll intercept an army placed here rather than this guy, and this guy can more accurately ambush people on the road. But let's attack Moazem Rathor with his mixed force here. 
and drive them back to the north. To El Norte. Did we expect anything like anything other than this when we invaded India? I don't think we did. Um, but I'm hoping all my indigenous recruitment within the region will be able to shut down their uh, home trade. Not that they've really got many places to trade with if we're cutting off the Americas. And we own everyone else, everywhere else. Okay, let's put the heat artillery on this slope. Let's take our guns and have them ready to rock and roll. This looks like a former former garrison army. Well, it doesn't have to be a garrison army. At the very least, it just has to, has to be an early army because we've got lots of cool units. Good. Horse grenadier guards on the right flank. General in the centre. We've got plenty of infantry. You guys in within here within round shot range, you're okay. Yeah, I know that's very keen, but good artillery in. So they're gonna focus fire their artillery, and that's okay. I would like a bunch of these armies to secure this hill. A bunch of these troops to secure this hill. So I think you guys. Run and secure this hill. We might get interfered with by some cavalry. These guys are marines. Marines and engineers. They're advancing their artillery up close, which is nice. We're starting to hit some... Quick climb shots. Yeah, we're gonna have to dump some men into squares at some point because they're not gonna let us run along the flank too often. Well, let's just dump you guys into square because at the very least you're on a collision course. The same can be said about you guys. There we go. They, they turn around. Dump you guys into square. I mean, the heavy cavalry, they can do some damage to them, but... There we go. We actually did deploy our squares enough. But again, they're two marines, so... Bring our horse guards over. I don't mind if they charge our cav... I, don't, I really don't mind early cavalry charges, because... Our infantry is... Sufficiently good that... What we notice is... That we can well we can just drop squares down and they can't really uh, stop us like their cavalry charges they sure they interfere with our plans and might they get a disproportionately a disproportionate amount of kills early on and you go yes and you go, yeah but that, that doesn't actually really hurt us in a way that in a way that they would might want it to So, like, the men on this flank. I mean, like, yeah, that might be a bad charge. Because they probably bowled into them there. But again, just keep forming squares. Got my troops formed up. So if the two fangy decide to charge this unit on the weaker left flank, we can get them. we got my horse guards here. Fire it will on. And I fire a volley into the Royal Cavalry Guards. Then counter charge. The Islamic swordsmen look like they want to try and help them in the combat. Let's get two units to attack the Sikh warriors and let's get a unit of engineers to run around the rear and surround them. My marines can hold the flank here. The right flank is secure enough. Quick climbing howitzers. You attack ground there. You guys attack Kizilbashi. My artillery attacking some of these units in the center. There we go. So the Islamic swordsmen have charged the infantry there. You guys charge the Sikh warriors in the rear. Because they're, they're not... Sikh warriors aren't bad. 
But fortunately, a lot of other things are. So you men advance up like so. You men advance up and help secure the right flank. Lots of quick climb going off. So the Sikh warriors have been surrounded and that should make them a lot more... I mean, it should make it a lot simpler to pick them off. Yep, there they go. Then you men charge on and hit the levee. Where's my general? Let's get him over here because it looks like the Sikh warriors are going to route through, through our lines. All my artillery... You can't shrapnel shot, but you can round shot the bejesus out of these Zimandari horsemen. My heavy cavalry's on the march. You guys pivot. Yeah, the infantry guards think they're doing a good job, but they are not. You men push up onto the ridge. You guys just maintain a general advance. Actually, I might get all my artillery to focus on the general's bodyguard. Nope, I didn't give you the final attack order. Fortunately, these levy are charging some of my heaviest, heavily armed troops. Got marines and engineers. My marines are engaging the horsemen, so they should take them out in quick succession. Switch my howitzers to round shot. Get them to also attack the general's bodyguard. You men flank the Royal Indian Guards. You men advance like so. My cavalry just charge on the routing units. If you guys could kill the Sikh warriors, that would be a real coup. Because they were actually a pretty decent unit in the melee, and I don't want to fight any or more of those. Let's get my marines up. All my artillery fire engage the general's bodyguard. Let's get my marines up to charge down, to charge the guns. Run my horse, run my he uh, horse guard artillery. Well, not my horse guard artillery. Horse guards along. These two units are going to pour fire into the flank of the Royal Indian. Royal Indian Infantry Guards, so they are not going to be around for very long. But they've pivoted because they know that's where the bulk of the fire is, that's what's going to do the most damage, so you want that head-on. But it still means the 142nd are going to get some good shots on the flank anyway. That's the beauty of outflanking, is that it doesn't matter if you don't want it. If, it doesn't matter if you don't want to be outflanked. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Advance these men up past the guns. Yeah, the guns of You men can chase down the guns because they are they successfully limbered up before they routed, so chase them down. Let's pick pick these two. Advance them up like so. I want to flank the general's bodyguard and hopefully take him out. See, my cavalry's still. Yeah, take out the Islamic swordsman. Yeah, hopefully, you guys can knock out the the last of these Sikh warriors. I'd be quite happy about that. Go on. Take him out. There we go. Yeah, the general's bodyguard has advanced up towards their remaining infantry block, and then they've had enough. So let's cease our artillery fire, speed up time, and we are going to continue. Actually, I might get... Oh, okay, enemy general's been killed. Okay, maybe fight the Hindu musketeers. Oh, don't worry about the general's, general's bodyguard. Come up here and help them fight these Hindu musketeers, because they're the largest intact unit, so it would be nice to cut them down to size before they leave the field of battle. Cut them down to about half strength. Or less than half strength. That will be... Good enough. 
And it's just the general's bodyguard, who is no longer the general. Good. And we kill the general, which is always nice. So that's pushed them way on the east bank. So we can replenish, the, or rebuild the rice farm. These men can replenish and advance. Nicola Andrizi, advance right here. If they intercept us, that's fine. Then attack, just to make sure we push them the right way. Dervishes, Islamic swordsmen, Hindu warriors, lots of melee troops as usual, Sikh musketeers, no Sikh warriors. Let's take them out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, we've got plenty of plenty of fights abound. And what you will notice is that, you know, we're going to fight a bunch of Indian troops this turn, which means a lot of our armies are going to be depleted. So if they come back again next turn, it's going to be that much more difficult. And then again, and again, and again. So that's why... It's really important we keep Calcutta generating new armies. And um, down, in, down in Sri Lanka, we want them to generate new armies as well. So my artillery is going to trundle up onto this hill to provide some good fire. My howitzers are going to just fire. Fire at will from here. Similarly to last time, form a almighty... I was hoping I would be able to do it past the the terrain feature, but apparently not. So a lot fewer elites in this army. But we've got a good amount of cavalry this time. Let's keep my general actually in the action. So, start. Artillery trundle up. Stretch my line out on one flank. You guys... Stretch my line out there. Cavalry up on this hill. We're absolutely mobbing that enemy cavalry unit. Yeah, it's Hindu warriors. Hindu musketeers. Hindu musketeers. Yeah, don't worry. You guys will be taken care of. engage whatever targets you are able to engage bowmen 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 hindu warriors dervishes eh they're a big they're quite good to hit so then my artillery went once it's in position and limber with shrapnel shot because they're all so damn close Yeah, so we can't do... We're not going to be attacking their artillery, but we are going to be destroying their army on the field. These men here are actually going to push up to form a more coherent line. My cavalry up on the flank. So my shrapnel shot, focus on the the Hindu musketeer units to the rear of the position. There we go, blowing holes into these more sturdier units. More sturdy units. More sturdier. There we go. So the first bow unit's been pushed back. The dervishes that are attempting to charge through the cover of the trees they're going to be pushed back. Those guys are a bit of a concern. So let's try quick climb them a bit. You guys try quick climb them. You guys. Quick climb those Hindu musketeers. Let's get our cuirassier to engage the Hindu warriors. Once we've, there we go. So now the, now the line has been, has been, what? How are you running that fast? You're on regular speed. Curious to see how well Curassiers do against Hindu warriors. 
The answer could be not very well. Okay, those cuirassiers... Well, these are both hussars, eh? Not very well is the answer. And they're also being fired on by bowmen, so that's not entirely surprising. Interesting. So let's pivot you guys back a little bit. All my field artillery, round shot, the general's bodyguard to the rear. The howitzers can have a grand old time against these remaining units. The bowmen have been pushed back. New men push back. Or fall back. So you men advance against one flank. You guys advance to support the other. That foot infantry unit is not running back like I would like. Curiosier, ooh, don't hit the Zimindari horsemen. Let's get this general over here to do some work. Yeah, keep hitting these mobile enemy positions. You keep attacking the dervishes. So what is going on over here? The bowmen are there. There's still a unit of Hindu warriors here. It's interesting to observe. So you charge the Hindu musketeers. And pivot. go continue to engage so you guys are hope thankfully are firing at the general's bodyguard these guys so hindu warriors they're a bit scary so form a new line for when they break through pick line the bejeez out of those horsemen Bit of friendly fire there as well. So let's get our howitzers on to round shot. Get our field artillery on to round shot. Yeah, you guys attack the Hindu warriors. Uh, you guys, can you... Can you please kill these dervishes? Please... Oh, those are Hindu musketeers, they're not so bad. Be over here, I'm expecting the 129th to rout. Okay, you two cease fire. Yeah, expected them to rout, that's why I formed that new battle line. A trap not even the Hindu war a trap even the Hindu warriors could not resist. A lot of men with guns. Present or fire in. Yep, there they go. Dervishes. Cease the artillery fire. You attack the dervishes. It's 
Let's bring you down here. I'm assuming the dervishes won't be too much of a problem for hussars, but then again, hussars are light cavalry, so that could well be a false assumption. Yeah, let's get you down against the bowmen. Ah, the hussars have got them. Oh, perfect. You guys go after those Hindu musketeers. So fortunately, well, we're bringing in... Oh, these are both bowman units. Okay, you go after that one. You guys go after... I oh, don't know, they're going to route anyway. You guys, though, you're having a grand old time, because you're getting to kill... Ah, they routed. Nuts. Go over here, help the dervishes. Control, click you. Oh, the last unit on the field. So yeah, at least the units we brought in from our reserve or reinforcing army, they're just cavalry and they've not actually taken any damage. So that's pretty awesome. What's that we've got? Yeah. We lost 600 men, they lost 4,500. And back you go. So now you guys go to a bit more of a central position. You're going to wait for them. The new army is in the process of being built, so you've got space for seven more men. So you're recruiting three there. Can you guys form square? Nope. In which case then... Well, that doesn't actually matter. Although I'm still, I'm still pretty sure my native Indian sepoys can't form square, so... It makes me reluctant to have them because we know how the, the Ottomans, not the Ottomans, the Indian factions do love to just smack you with cavalry charge after cavalry charge after cavalry charge. So we can't rely on... Uh, we can't rely on them against the Indian factions, I don't think. So let's attack this smaller Indian army. They've got a 64 pounder great gun. Yeah, we'll have, we will have dealt the enemy... A mighty blow this day, and they will have to recover and reinforce this frontier because uh, you know, things are. We're in a we're in a pretty strong position over here, and it's only going to get better because after this round of combat, which might take a few episodes, um, I am going to then launch my southern India invasion. So my two is going to go up on the extreme right flank. There we go. Infantry front line. This army is going to be pretty good at fighting the Indian factions. They've got well, we've got that pike support. So my howitzers are going to be up front, far and away. My garrison guards are going to be pushing up the right flank on the uneven terrain. They're going to be on their own, so that's why I want my garrison guards out there. They'll have some cavalry. They'll have some cavalry, but not uh, not as much as they might like. So my general is going to stay safe behind the line. So let's push up to here. Again with, with pike support. My field artillery is opening up. It's all going to hit against the enemy artillery. Well, actually, no, they have to hit the Hindu musketeers because that's all they can hit. And the bowmen. That's not bad. Form my guard units up. Face off against these units. Let's actually get one of you guys to shrapnel shot. The w oh, these are war elephants. They're not just any old elephants. They're actual elephants for fighting. They're not a general general's unit. But the field artillery is doing a good job. They've actually done a lot of damage to the general's bodyguard. Knocked out a few elephants there with shrapnel shot. And some of my own guys. So you men, present. Fire. 
ball volleys into the war elephants. There we go. Because they are just... They are just elephants. Okay, cavalry. Run in to block the Adi. Bring my Swiss pikes over here as well to give them that extra support. Because they are... Armoured Lance Cavalry. Charge them with my pike, with my cavalry to fix them in position. The artillery unit that's on the right flank is firing shrapnel shots. Switch to round shot. Engage. Pour the levy. Got cavalry on the on the flank. Yeah, these pikemen should really help. My cuirassier would likely win. In an, in, in an engagement, because they are proper fighting cavalry, rather than rather than lance cavalry, like the um, the two man, the Ayadi are. But pikes, extra pikemen never hurts. Run my Swiss pikes in there because they've committed because my cavalry have committed. Let's get my Swiss pikes in there. And the thing is with their pikemen is their pikemen seems to be unfortunately vulnerable from a morale perspective. Well, I think my Swiss pikes are actually doing really good well against them. Let's just run my cavalry through the gap. Get my guardsmen in here. Run my cavalry on to attack the mortars. Yeah, they're broken. It's free reign for you guys against their artillery. I think they're routing. Let's get my cavalry to chase down. Oh, they're not. They aren't routing. They've got units up here, aren't they? I am a fool. Okay, back to quick climbing those Hindi musketeers. Oh, see the mortars are firing. Just the crew. Yeah, you guys hit the Sea Warriors. Push our cavalry up on the flank. The main effort has to be getting these infantry units up to spook the Hindu Musketeers. Or oh, just charge them with pikes. Cease fire with all my artillery. Charge across the board. Well, there we go. I don't know if I can be especially bothered to chase them down, though, in this instance. I think they've been routed so conclusively it's a bit redundant <laughs> there you go let's push them back oh there you go these are the exchange ratios we need to see <laughs> roughly well more than 10 to 1 back you go so new man replenish obviously got a force here but they're slowly being augmented by Every turn, it's another 400 troops are joining them. You're doing a grand job holding the front down here. Because you can't reach them. Neither can they. So that's a pretty good defensive brawl there. Up on this front, you need to hit and push Muazam Khan off the bridge. Which you can do. Now, but I think so I might forget, I might actually start the invasion... So, 
Just so I don't fight a few battles and forget that this is a thing. Go on, Nino. You're an elite commander. And you men are going to advance. And land off the enemy coast. I doubt, highly doubt any of their ports are actually going to be accessible for us. Yeah, that port's blocked. So we may as well just send them to blockade any ports that we've got. That are blockade any ports that are free. Well, not free, but, you know, no ships in them. So sail you down. I'm keeping them all together just so they can provide a bit of mutual support. That way they're not going to get isolated and destroyed. That will make them go crap and have to really figure out what they want to do. And if we keep raiding their ports, they're not going to want to um, leave too many ports exposed. Okay, let's make a slightly bigger landing force. Just because I want to now kind of group some of my... I want to group some of my um, fleets into a bigger attack. So you land them off the coast there. They're on their way. It's a long way for an amphibious invasion. There we go. So then you men block Calica and you'll get eyes on to the Mysore port, which is actually pretty weak. So what might have to happen is I'll split these two fleets up and then they will combine to blockade Mysore. And Nesto Defendi, you've been there all since the start. You've been here. But the hope is if I blockade their port here, they won't want to pull this fleet out, because of this army out, to attack me. Otherwise I will raid it. I mean, there's a chance that we're going to get smacked by a whole bunch of Mysore troops. But that's part of the reason why I've landed in such force so if i sit you guys here yeah they are making a bit of money through trade we're gonna get our thirds in there oh, our lone puckle gun army that army is going to be fighting at a disadvantage So at the very least, these armies can be, well, over time, they will be reinforced by the army here at Ceylon. So you've got eight recruitment slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ordini. Si, signore. Land the troops. Combine these men together. Blockade Mangalore. Prevent that fleet from breaking out. So then we've got... Third rate ship of the line over here. Let's sail. It doesn't look like they've got any ships, to be honest. Because look, all these ports are empty. So just raid them. Raid them and blockade them. You don't even need good ships for that. Just raid and blockade. So then let's sail one of these ships that's Waiting, awaiting repairs, although you two fifth rates might actually sail over to East Indies. This sloop is put into the steam dry dock. You continue to repair. Then let's pair these guys up with a, first, with a third rate and a fourth rate. There we go. Steam dry dock there that could recruit troops, which could be a concern. You guys might actually build a sixth rate. To ship these this army these armies down to the south as well, so got, got high clamour for reform. I wonder where's my priest? We've got a church school here anyway, don't we? Yes, we do. Well, our church school, religious building. Let's get you on your way down into Mughal territory to start stirring up the blood. Because you're going to build a church school there. I'm not going to build it because you're probably going to raid it. Although if we if we attack them and they run this way, then I will build it. Because otherwise they, ha they either have to come this way or they have to go all the way up and around. Because these mountain, mountain passes I think are pretty Im 
impossible. Okay, so, G Girolamo Ferraris. Mr. Ferraris. Attack Muazam Khan. Storm his river position and hold the bridge. But, looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And we'll see you next time for yet another attack against the Mughal forces. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>